Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and today we'll talk about understanding the spine. You know, one of the things I see as a practicing physician is patients can get pretty confused when talking about their neck or their back. And a lot of that confusion stems from the fact that they don't have a good grasp and understanding of how the spine is put together. And without that, it's hard for them to understand what might go wrong. And therefore, it's not really hard to understand what the options for treating those things might be. So if you've got back or neck pain and are wondering about what's wrong with your spine, then this is the video for you. So the spine is a series of blocks that stack on one another. Very simple. The blocks are called vertebrae, or if you're talking about a single one, a vertebra, and they have shock absorbers between them called discs. And these discs uh, allow motion and also absorb force that gets transmitted into the spine with walking, running, those sorts of things. The vertebrae have a back part that contains areas where they meet called facet joints. And the facet joints are critical because they allow and control motion between each individual spine bone or vertebra. And they also can get injured or become arthritic. The spine also protects all the nerves. So the spinal cord and nerve roots. And those are the nerves that transmit feeling and tell the muscles what to do. And the area where the nerves exit so between the one on top and the one on the bottom is called a foramen. So that's a, a term you might see, for instance, on an MRI report. And regrettably, for many patients and doctors, this is kind of where the story ends. But that's not good for patients because there's more to the story. We're missing a few key pieces of the spine that are critical. It's important to understand that once you stack all these blocks, one on top of the other, just like a kid who stacks too many blocks too high, the whole thing becomes very unstable. So some of these key pieces are all about stability. How do we stabilize the spine? One of the ways that that happens is through ligaments. And these are pieces of duct tape that are critically important, but frequently ignored by physicians. They're critically important because they help hold the spine together. And there are tons of these ligaments in the spine. Muscles are the second line of defense. You have small stabilizing muscles called multifidus. These control motion of one vertebra on the other. And again, they're very critical for your overall spine health. And they can atrophy when you have back pain, leading to an unstable spine. But they're frequently ignored by doctors. They're frequently ignored by radiologists despite hundreds of studies that show that they're critical. And when we stack so many blocks on top of each other, we get these really tall towers of vertebra that need to be further stabilized. And your spine has a few tricks for how it does this. Your body solves that problem in one way by creating curves or opposing curves. So opposing curves basically means that in your neck, you have a lordosis and the curve goes this way. And in your upper back, the curve goes opposite that. So an opposing curve and your lower back, you have a lordosis and it goes the opposite way. Those curves are critical. And sometimes they get ignored in things like spine surgery and patients get really messed up from the surgery. And there's now a bunch of research showing that you have to have these curves built in. And if you don't have these curves, that causes problems. The body also solves the big stability problem by using guy wires or muscles that act as guy wires. So if you ever look at anatomy pictures, muscles tend to look like guy wires on a sailboat mast. Basically, they're there to stabilize the whole thing. So now that we know what we have and how it's put together, 
let's look at what happens when things go wrong. So what kind of disc do you have? What, meaning, what kind of disc problem do you have? I have patients that come to me all the time and say, uh, they said I have a problem with my disc. My first question is, well, what kind of problem do you have with your disc? And that's generally where I lose the patient. So it's critical for you as a patient to understand that there are different things that can go wrong with discs. There's a herniated disc where the disc material that lives on the inside of the disc can herniate out. There's a bulging disc where the material doesn't squirt out, but the whole thing bulges out. And you can see here, you've got a nerve right here that can be irritated and that's going to cause numbness and tingling down the leg or weakness in the leg, etc. There are torn and painful discs where the disc itself is painful and there are degenerated discs. So let's start with the first two, the herniated and bulging disc, which is pretty much pressure or irritation of a spinal nerve. So again, in a herniated disc, the stuff on the inside squirts out and that causes a nerve issue and a bulging disc. It doesn't squirt out, but the disc bulges and that messes with the nerve. A torn disc can cause pain by itself. So discs, believe it or not, can develop tears and those tears can cause disc pain. There really isn't necessarily a nerve involved. It just causes back pain. And then there are degenerated discs and degeneration happens as we get older. We lose disc height. So as you can see here, the disc is now darker. It's not holding on to water. It's smaller than it used to be. Those other discs that I, that I had were uh, bigger, were about that big. Now the disc has gotten smaller. And as that happens, the whole system becomes unstable. And what do I mean by unstable? The, the disc actually starts to move one on the other. And that causes all sorts of problems. Facet joints can become injured. They can become arthritic. And if the disc loses height and becomes degenerated, we also get more force on that facet joint leading to arthritis. As that extra motion starts and continues, the body will throw more bone at the problem. So the patient will get stenosis. So the patient hears this word stenosis. It means bone spurs pressing on a nerve, but you have to realize that the bone spurs were caused by excessive motion and a degenerated disc. So there's a reason these bone spurs formed. Your body is trying to stabilize the area. And as they form, the nerve coming out can get pinched. In addition, a very critical problem is multifidus atrophy. When the small stabilizing muscles called multifidus atrophy or get smaller, that leaves the spine unstable. And regrettably, this is a well-researched problem. We know a lot about it, but many doctors completely ignore it, as do many radiologists, which is really not good. And let me show you why it's not good. So this is over here on the left, a normal lumbar spine. So you see this dark muscle back here. It's kind of all dark. If you looked at this as a stake, so to speak, it would be a good stake. But you look down here and you see these patches of white inside this area here where the multifidus is. And that means the muscle has gotten smaller and it's being replaced by fat. It's called fat atrophy. Well, why is that important? What does it do? So what it does is it causes instability in the spine. So you see up top there uh, a, a stable spine where uh, the person's walking and the two individual vertebra are being aligned as they walk. And on the bottom, you see an unstable spine where the spine is just moving willy nilly with activity. And that's because of this multifidus atrophy. So 
it is critical that you have this component looked at. And if you have a doctor who hasn't discussed this with you, find another doctor. And when you lose the curves that help balance forces, too much weight gets transferred to the disc, causing the disc to fail earlier due to wear and tear. Again, critically important. And if your doctor isn't talking to you about whether you still have these curves or whether they've been lost, again, find another doctor. So what can you do if you have any of these issues? Uh, surgery usually isn't the answer. In fact, there's a lot of research that shows that there are big problems with operating on the spine. Find a doctor who looks at all of these things. If you have gone through a doctor visit with a certain physician and he hasn't mentioned all of these things and talked about all of them at one point or another, then find another doctor. You're not with the right provider. In addition, we've been using a lot of autologous biologic therapies like platelet-rich plasma and stem cells to help patients avoid surgery. And I think that's something that you should consider. And if you want more information about that, go to Regenix.com. But the focus of this video is teaching you about your spine. So I hope I was able to accomplish that goal.